All right, welcome back. We have Mr. Bean and Mr. Kelly, and uh, little known fact, when they were teaching together, they taught at a school in Baumholder in Germany, American school, and uh, they were known as the inverse and the determinant. And so today, we're going to be talking to you about the inverse and the determinant of a matrix. Super cool, right? They are, by far, they're the two coolest teachers at a school, thus the nicknames. Um, but hey, it is what it is. Could have been worse. Could have been dumb and dumber, right? Like, who knows? All right, here we go. So, first thing we want to talk about is kind of having an identity matrix. And what is an identity matrix? Well, much like the number one is an identity, because when I multiply something by it, I get the same thing back. An identity matrix is very similar, but it's a square matrix with ones down its diagonals and zeros everywhere else. And when you multiply... A matrix by the identity matrix it results in the original so for example I have a 2 by 2 here but I could have a 3 by 3 right ones down the diagonal right here zeros everywhere else okay let's see what happens when we multiply by an identity matrix so we're gonna do this one by hand you really need to be able to do 2 by 2 matrix multiplication by hand I'm also going to show you some things in the calculator to make things go a little bit faster, but I just want you to understand the expectation is that you can do a 2 by 2 matrix by hand. All right, so I have a 2 by 2 and I have a 2 by 2. So they match in the middle and I will get a 2 by 2 in the end. So if my purpose is to get the same exact matrix in the end, so far we are in good standing. We're trying to get A back here, all right? Now let's call C, actually let's call that I. That's our identity matrix okay all right so first element is first row first column so first row times the first column two times one is two negative four times zero is zero so this is going to be two this is the first row second column first row second column two times zero is zero negative four times one is negative four add them together i get negative four you can start kind of see why this works right so this is going to be second row first column Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. 3 times 0 is 0, so negative 2. Over here, second uh, row, second column. Negative 2 times 0 is 0 and 3. So we got the exact same thing back. Now, we multiplied A times my identity. What happens if I multiply my identity matrix by A? Does it matter? That's the commutative property, right? Well, let's take a look. So I already put this in here. I have A times, or I, my identity times A. And if you'll notice, we get the same thing back, which is great. And what we hoped for, right? Okay. Now let's try something else. Let's try and multiply B times our identity matrix. The first thing we want to talk about here, this is now a 3 by 2. And this is a 2 by 2. These match, and I get a 3 by 2 back. So the possibility of getting the matrix I want back is possible. Let's see if it's reality, though. All right, so I believe I have matrix B in there already. So I'm going to go matrix B times matrix I. And what do we get? We got 2, negative 4, 5, 3, 2, negative 1. So yes, we multiplied... A 3 by 2 matrix, by our identity matrix, and it did work. What if I switch them? Let's see what happens if I switch them. So, do this a little bit easier here. Delete this, delete this, times B. Doesn't work. Ah, dimensions. Ah, I didn't check the dimensions. So, let's check the dimensions. So, I did a 2 by 2 identity matrix. And then I multiplied that by my 3 by 2. Didn't check it. So it is not commutative here. So while it did work here on this occasion, all right, I absolutely had to have two columns to get the identity matrix to work, right? It doesn't work for anything else. All right. But I can multiply any 2 by 2 by the identity matrix of a 2 by 2 and get it back. Much like I can multiply any 3 by 3 matrix by an identity matrix of a 3 by 3 and get it back as well. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important because <clears throat> the inverse of a matrix is a matrix that when multiplied by a given matrix results in the identity. So 
if I had matrix A and I multi uh, multiplied by the inverse of that, I would get my identity matrix. Much like if I have a number 2 and I multiply by the inverse of that number, I get 1. Very similar, okay? In order to have a matrix, uh, to have an inverse, it has to be square. So we cannot have an inverse of matrices that are 3 by 2s or 2 by 3s or 4 by 5s. It has to be a square matrix. It's really important. And for the 2 by 2 matrices to have an inverse, the determinant must not equal 0. So what is the determinant? The determinant is this formula. If I have a matrix A, B, C, D, I simply multiply these and multiply these and subtract the two numbers. Okay? So... <clears throat> Let's find this matrix. Let's find out if it has an uh, inverse to begin with. So the determinant, right, what I would say is find the determinant of matrix A. And so I'm going to do here, A times D, that's 6, minus negative 2 times negative 4 is 8, 6 minus 8 is negative 2, right? All right. So that right there would be the determinant. Now you'll notice that number is not zero, and it must not equal zero. If it equals zero, then it would not work. Boo. All right, it would not have an inverse. It would not be invertible. All right? All right, so we're doing two by two matrices, and really those are the ones we're going to do mostly. There will be some times where I'll ask you to maybe find a three by three in a calculator, but all these two by twos, I'm really thinking you should be able to do by hand. They're not that hard. So given that A is invertible, and why would A be invertible? Well, the determinant, which we now know how to find, would be not equal to 0. All right. If we have our matrix A, B, C, D, then the inverse is 1 over that determinant, right, times, notice this, A and D flip, right? They flip spots, and B and C stay but are the opposite, all right? So let's try and find the inverse of this one. So we know that our determinant was 2. So we now know that this is going to be 1 over 2 times. I'm going to flip my DNA. So 2 and 3 is now going to be 3 up here, 2 down there. And have the opposite signs here. So that's going to be positive 2 and positive 4. And then this is some easy scalar multiplication. 1 half times 3 is 3 halves. 1 half times 4 is 2, 1 half of 2 is 1, and 1 again. And there we have it. We have done and found our matrix inverse. All right, so that would be equal to A inverse. All right, can you find this on the calculator? Absolutely. Let's go find matrix A. Now, the great thing is the inverse button is right there on matrix A, or on matrix Plug it in, you'll notice they didn't like the fractions. You could always go to math frac and change it to fractions. They put decimals, either one's fine. Doesn't bother us right now which one you do. It just matters that you can, yes, indeed find the inverse of a two by two matrix. Something really cool about the determinant actually is when we have some vectors, well, let's first find these vectors. Now, we can find the area of a parallelogram formed by two vectors, and remember, if I have this first vector here, which is my x-coordinate is 4, my y-coordinate is 3, so that vector is 4, 3. And then this vector is 2 and 5. If we add on to that and we find the parallelogram here, we can find the area of this parallelogram just by finding the determinant of a matrix we form. So, let's form a matrix. Here we're going to say this is vector 1, and this is vector 2. Alright, let's find the determinant. Now the determinant again was 4 times 5. Now uh, that's 20 minus 6, which is 14. So the area of this parallelogram would be 14 units squared. Now, it doesn't matter which is first. Let's put 2, 5, and 4, 3 here and see if it matters which is first. 2 times 3 is 6, 
minus 20. Ooh, that gives me negative 14. Ah, that's why it's really important here, this word right here, absolute value. So the absolute value of that would be 14 or 14 units squared of the area. All right. Now, here's the other thing. What if you set up your matrix and this is V1 and V2? 4, 3, 2, 5. I believe I set things up later um, this way. So let's find that. 4 times 5, 20. Minus 6. Holy cow! Math is amazing. Works out great. For a 2x2 two two matrix, we can find the area of that parallelogram. Very cool. All right. So this should be a pretty quick one. But again, you should be able to do most of this stuff without a calculator right now. All right. Best of luck. Keep going on. Press forward and dream big.